Hey everybody, if you have knee discomfort or pain, this video is for you. This is our second video in a three-part series, and today we're gonna to be talking about what you can do to alleviate knee discomfort or pain. In our first video, we talked about is it actually pain that's coming or discomfort that's coming from my actual joint, or is it really coming from some muscle, and muscle imbalance or the patterning that our movements go through. So first thing you wanna do is make sure that you've checked with your doctor, that you're cleared for exercise, that you don't have a structural thing going on, and then I'm gonna dive in right where we left off, which I was talking about the things that are more muscular and balanced. And the reason I'm talking about this is because 85 to 90% of the people that I have worked with that have come in and said, hey, I have bad knees, right? You might even say that too. And it turns out that 85 to 90% of them were able to do some sort of exercise, some sort of strengthening or stretching that helped to alleviate that issue or eliminate it completely. And they were able to do more and more physically with their bodies, even things that they thought they couldn't do, which I think is really awesome, which is why we're doing this video today. So what we're talking about here is knee discomfort that comes from muscle imbalance. And I mentioned it, this IT band area can get tight, these guys can get tight or weak, cause pain on the inside, pain on the outside, these guys getting tight, pulling on the top, overactive hamstrings or weak hamstrings in the back. So all of these things contribute, but there's really some simple things without getting super technical that you can look for to help yourself. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna move this chair over just a little bit, is a lot of times these issues are coming from your feet, believe it or not. So if you think about building a house you wouldn't build that house on a, on a crappy foundation, right? Because over time, the foundation's gonna crumble and then your house starts to shift. Well, think of your feet as the foundation for your house, right? These guys need to be rooted. And what do we see so much? We see a lot of what we call pronating. Now, I'm gonna exaggerate because I know it's challenging for you to see, but what happens is that arch of my foot starts to collapse. You can see it even a little better on my right foot, your left. And my ankle then falls in and then look what happens to my knees. See how they're falling together? So that's a cascade effect of what we call the kinetic chain. So the, the arches collapse in, the ankles collapse in, and then it goes right up into your knee and then often goes up into the hip into the low back. So simply put, can't we just really work on how we stand on our feet. Now, I know a lot of people wear orthotics, which is almost like putting a cast on your foot, so it helps it to bring it into a better alignment. Um, I've had people who have bad orthotics that still get knee pain or have used orthotics and then also done these strengthening exercises so that you're really building the muscle of your feet so that you can eat, eventually wean yourself off of the orthotics. We have people come off orthotics completely. I'm not saying that's what you should do. I'm just letting you know that people have done that working with us over and over and over and over. So this stuff does work. Um, you just gotta put in the time to do it. So simply for standing on your own two feet, you, wanna, you can even look at the way the back of your shoes are worn. Does the inside of your heel wear out more than the outside of the heel? And you might see, we see less of this knees pushing out or supinating. We see a lot more of the um, imbalance coming from the arches collapsing in, and that's where we get the knees falling in. So I'm gonna focus on that one because that's what we see the most of. Okay, so if you were standing in front of a mirror, simply you would root big toe, pinky toes, and heels. And in the third video, I'm gonna go over a sequence where I'm gonna cue you to do all those things so you don't have to remember it, but I'm gonna give you the tips right now. You wanna feel the weight even between the outside and the inside edges of your foot. If you pronate, you're gonna feel more weight, I can feel it right now, in like your big toe area. So you wanna get the weight out there in the pinky toe, and you can see as I do it, my legs all the way up start to come into a more neutral stance. 
It's actually going to help activate muscles on the outside lines of the legs to help support that and pull the bones into a better alignment. Now, how else you can check is if you sat in a chair and you go to stand up, when you stand up, do your knees go together to stand up? I'm saying this because we see this a lot. As you go to do that movement, you go in and push up. Now imagine doing that movement for 20 years, 30 years, 40 years, over and over and over and over. Because it's not just going to repeat itself probably when you sit down and stand up, but anytime you step up to go up a stair, that same movement pattern happens. Your knee goes in, either we're looking at some weakness or some tightness, but your knee is going in. And now this track that the knee is going on is now starting to develop a new groove, but not in a good way. So we start to kind of rub the wrong way. We can start to wear out cartilage. We can aggravate the tendons in there. And that's where you end up, oh, I have knee pain. But really, it's this whole tracking. And if we start to develop the muscles to help those bones track the way that they need to, we can start to alleviate that and even make it a lot better and make ourselves stronger in the long run, right? Okay, so. That's the, that's the things to look at. Does it fall in, right? Does the knee go in when you're going up a step, when you're standing up a chair? Start to look for those things. Uh, you may tend to lock your knees back. Uh, mine don't do this, but when you see people whose legs bow back, you're hyperextending the knee and just sort of locking the joint. You'll hear us when we teach to say to soften the knee a little bit so you're not just sitting back into the joint, but we're actually creating some space and keeping a nice alignment without jamming into there. And again, it'll start to wear away the cartilage and then can also start to um, irritate the tendons and things there. So here's another one. We're gonna go over squats and lunges because these are the big ones. When folks come in or to do yoga or when we work with them, they'll say, I can't do squats because I have bad knees. And we say, do you sit down on the toilet? because you have to squat to sit down and stand up, and I bet you do. So you can squat, you might not be going down as low, or there's a perceived thing up here that you're unable to do it. But what could be simply happening is, the way that you're doing it is causing pressure in that knee and making it hurt, when we can really be doing the squat to actually strengthen everything around it. So here's what you wanna look for. Any time that you're bending your knee, you want the knee to track over the center of the foot. So think of your big toe and then your second toe and the third toe, so the middle toe. You want your knee kind of pointing in that direction. Notice if it tends to point to the big toe or the pinky toes you want to bring it in. Whenever you're going to do a squat like in a fitness class or anytime, you, and if I'm doing a fitness class, I want my knees to track forward. So this is where that falling in would happen. You go to the, do the squat and they fall in or they protrude way out. If they protrude way out, push down on that big toe and push out with your heels. If they're falling in, you gotta roll those thighs out. And the cool thing about this is you can either stand in front of a mirror or simply look at them and notice where they're pointing. So that's number one. And that's gonna transfer from a squat also into a lunge. So if I'm doing a lunge of any sort, I want my knee to point again over the center of the foot, not falling into the inside, right? Get it over the center of the foot. It may wanna bow out, you can bring it in, but this is probably gonna be less of a problem for you than this one is gonna be, okay? So over the center of the foot regardless, okay? That's number, that's, that's number two. So for squats and lunges, knees over the center of the foot. Here's the other thing that happens in a squat. As you squat, your knees go forward. So see how far over my knees went over my toes? And then you're starting to get all this pressure in the kneecap. When you're gonna do a squat, and it's like you would sit in a chair. If you're gonna sit in a chair, you wouldn't go this way. If you're gonna sit into a chair, you stick your butt back to sit in the chair. So stick your booty back and look what it did to my knee. It pulled it back over the center of my foot and I'm also pulling the pressure out of um, the, in, the front of the knee, grinding it in there and I'm starting to actually use my legs and my 
hips and my glutes to make that motion happen. That's where we want it to happen. And I know it doesn't always feel good to have your legs burn, but you need strong legs if you want your knees to work right and if you want to be able to walk around. Same thing for the lunge. When you're going to do a lunge, you don't want your knee to be way forward. It can come over the center of the foot, but you want it to keep straight and over the center of the foot so you're not jamming forward into the joint again. So same thing. I, I mean, I can even feel the pressure just as I move forward. So there's how you would do it in a lunge as well. So those are two super common moves, and those are, those are two things you can do, and that could simply fix it. I can't even tell you how many people, just those two things, help their knees. They don't feel pain anymore, and then they're like, oh my gosh, I can squat. Last one I'll show you is, well, you're like, well, what if my feet are turned out? Same thing, your knees are still gonna point over the center of your foot. I'm gonna turn a little sideways so I think it's a better angle. Stick your butt back, Roll your thighs out and get the knee over the center of the foot. It might want to do this. Roll those thighs out, then keep reaching your butt back and getting it to go down as far as you can go. And that's going to be different for everybody and that's a whole different issue. But as far as alignment for your knees, those are a couple of the things you want to be looking at. So start with the noticing, do the feet pronate? Check it out when you stand up from a chair, do those knees fall in? Or when you're walking upstairs, cyclists a lot because you squeeze those inner thighs and the knees are going in. You guys get problems there, real tight adductors. So we are working on exercises to help that in the next video. And then the last thing is those squats and lunges, keeping that knee alignment so the knee is over the center of the foot and it doesn't track forward over the toe where your heel's coming off the floor. All right, so those are the tips for today. Make sure while you're here to hit that subscribe button if you haven't already, and then also click the bell so you're notified for any time that we post one of these awesome videos. And then let us know if you like this video. Was it helpful? Did it not help at all? We love to hear your feedback because it helps us create awesome new content. All right, have a great day and we'll catch you back here for video three.